Good evening, Bahamas. This is NB12 broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Here's what's making news tonight. The Prime Minister announces big news for Bimini. This development will employ as many as a thousand people. The father of a murder victim outraged now that his son's alleged killer is on the loose. Plus, hundreds show up to get tested for HIV. Those stories and more coming up. I'm Nikia DeVoe and NB12 starts right now. Thanks for joining us here at NB12. The world's premier casino operator and gaming company have entered into a new partnership to build a multi-million dollar boutique casino in Bimini. The new casino is expected to be completed at the end of this year, creating 300 new jobs on the island. It will feature state-of-the-art gaming with modern Caribbean decor. Additionally, Resorts World Genting and Rav Bahamas eventually plan to construct a new boutique hotel, which could employ an additional 700 people directly and indirectly. Vonik Toot reports. The Bimini Bay Resort and Casino will be home to a new $24 million luxury boutique casino in December, creating jobs for hundreds of Bahamians. The new development is a result of a partnership between Resorts World Genting and Rav Bahamas Limited. Officials expect the 10,000-square-foot world-class casino to create 300 jobs. Additionally, Prime Minister Perry Christie says developers will begin building a boutique hotel in another year or so, which is expected to create employment opportunities for an additional 700 people. This partnership, when you play it out to what it will become, envisages an additional hotel and therefore, in terms of projecting numbers really truly to a point where Bimini employs Bimini, this development will employ as many as a thousand people or bring about the employment as, as, as many as a thousand people. Negotiations for the new development began under the Ingram administration. Christie says this venture will provide further stability for the island's economy and lead to significant infrastructural improvements in both North and South Bimini. Government and the developer are currently in discussions to ensure that the people of Bimini will be given every opportunity as well as the training that will enable them to benefit directly as a result of this development. Resorts World is considered to be one of the world's premier resort and casino operators, while Rav Bahamas is a top gaming company. Chairman of Rav Bahamas, Geraldo Capo, and president of Resorts World, Dana Leibowitz, say they envision great things for Bimini. The casino which they're going to manage is going to be called the Resort World Bimini Casino, and uh, it's a deluxe 10,000 square feet casino that we intend to open God willing, uh, by the end of this year. The magic of Bimini is really what drew us to here. Um, Ernest Hemingway, Martin Luther King, his involvement there, uh, the, the, the youth. It's just a beautiful, beautiful island, and we feel that it is a great opportunity for us to build our first boutique casino. Uh, outside of uh, Asia. Tourism Minister Obi Wilshkom says the government has already begun discussions for additional airlift into the small island. Companies are now looking at Bimini and are about to begin new airlift to the island. That will then, of course, further expansion to the airport to facilitate the airlines that we expect to have. Officials say they look forward to a long and beneficial partnership. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vornik Toot. The father of 22-year-old Javon Mullings, who was stabbed to death on Monday in the Union Village area, said he was of course distraught when he learned that his son was murdered. But now he is even more anguished after learning that the teenager, suspected of killing his only son, escaped police custody and is now on the loose. Paige McCartney spoke with that grieving father today. 
50-year-old Glenn Mulling said the last thing he wants is to run into the man police believe is responsible for killing his son on the street. Well, I don't scared of him, but I scared I'll have to do something which I don't want to do because it's hard for to see someone kill your son and pass in you on the road. That's what I'm afraid of. Yesterday, police confirmed that a 17-year-old who was wanted for questioning in connection with the murder of Javon Mullings at Union Village on Monday was being guarded by two police officers while being treated for a neck wound when he escaped from Princess Margaret Hospital. I hope they could catch this fellow so I could get some justice. I need justice because this ain't right. And I can't see how they have two police guards, one person in the hospital and he walk out and nobody knows. I don't get no information from the police up to now. Uh, I haven't get back a call from them yet. I've been trying to reach them last night. With no success. Police are refusing to release the photo of the suspect, even though he is at large and wanted for murder because he is still a teen. He's been identified as Michael DeFriend of East Street South. But Mulling said he's aware of who the culprit is because he and his son are friends on Facebook. The father said although nothing could mend his broken heart after his son was murdered, at least he felt relief in that police had captured the person allegedly responsible. But now, learning that the alleged assailant is out free, Mulling said he could hardly contain himself. I was, um, I was just up in the morning and someone called me and said they heard the news. He escaped. So I called the police to find out if it was true. They told me they didn't have no news of it, but they'll check it and call me back. They did call back and said it's true when they investigate, they was going to call me back. All I could say that is like an insult to injury. After going through this and know they have the person to let him go, that let I feel worse. Mulling said he last saw his son on Sunday when he visited Javon's home and took him dinner. He said his son's last words were, see you tomorrow. He didn't show up to work, but, you know, I said, young people, I know he goes sometimes he show up, sometimes he doesn't. I was right there in the back here working. Um, Monday when my daughter called me, they stabbed him. And before I reached the hospital, the news I get, he was dead. Contrary to reports, Mulling said he wants things to be clear that his son was not fighting with his attacker. I heard from the person who was in the middle of them when he gets stopped. He walked away and said, man, I ain't to this. The guy hit him with a bottle in his head, and soon as he turned around, he stabbed him. That's about it. It wasn't a fight. It wasn't an allocation. It wasn't a fight. And you said this was over some girl that your son wasn't even interested wasn't in? Wasn't even interested in, I hear. That's, that's what I heard. Yeah. That's what I heard. He didn't interest in this girl. Most probably looking for him. He, he wasn't interested. The father said he'll miss working with his son the most. They worked together on construction projects. He said he doesn't know how he'll carry on without him. He's my only son, that's number one. I have more kids, but that's the only son. No, I'm working, he work with me. So every time I go to work, if I take my hammer up, that's it. If I work in some place dangerous, he'll say, Daddy, you don't go up there, let me go. Because I teach him the trade and he, he learned well. I could leave him to work and leave him with people to work. And if they ain't working good, he'll fire them more than he quicker than me. That's the type of person he was. Mulling said what's most frustrating is that he had to find out information about the alleged killer's escape from the media and through the grapevine. He said what's also most frustrating is that police haven't contacted him yet. For MB12, I'm Paige McCartney. Well, the mothers of two young men who lost their lives to violence during the past month are also still mourning, but say they feel slightly safer since community outreach programs entered their neighborhoods. Christina McNeil has more. Residents of the Baines and Grantstown and Centerville communities still reeling in the wake of violent incidents that left two teenage boys dead. Today, police, members of the Urban Renewal 2.0 program, reached out to those hurting families and sent a clear message to other young men living in these areas. What has it been like since he passed away? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Barbara Kelly, mother of 17-year-old Joshua Darling, is still emotional recalling the recent murder of her son. Darling was at Kwaku Street, not far from home, when he was fatally shot last Saturday night. Kelly told MB12 the killing has to stop as she struggled to hold back tears. Meanwhile, Bridget Glinton says she is still coping with her son's murder. Glinton, mother of 16-year-old Kevin Leo McDonald, who was killed in the May 29th shooting at Ballers Nightclub, says she was unable to attend her son's funeral as she had just given birth. Clinton says at times it still doesn't feel real, but the community outreach efforts of urban renewal officers and nearby churches has helped. Officer in charge of the Baines and Grantstown Urban Renewal Division, Inspector Roderick McKenzie, says he and his officers do what they can to lift the spirits of those who are still hurting. Because it wasn't for them, I wasn't going to get no help, but I wasn't going to feel like how I'm feeling now. They had someone bring me up off my knee and bring me up. They talk to me, I talk to them and everything. And they make me feel special and I appreciate for everything that they, that they have done. Most of them are really hurting and they're just looking for someone to show some concern, give them some hope, some help. And to just offer them some advice in their making the, making the arrangements for the funerals and just someone to really talk to, someone who cares. And we at Urban Renewal Bain and Grandstown will be showing them that. Today, Baines and Grantstown Urban Renewal officers, along with Centerville officers, walked the streets, giving their condolences and sympathies to the family members of those touched by crime and murder. Through the Urban Renewal Program, police say they will continue to assist the families of crime victims, as this is a program designed to do just that. This is going to be an ongoing um, exercise um, from our urban renewal area where we approach uh, members of the public um, to see what their concerns may be and um, also when something like this no one can ever prepare you for a tragedy as a loss of a loved one and and so when we come we come with peace and we come with a word of comfort we want to talk to as many young men as we can there's growing tensions in these surrounding communities since um, last week's murder and we wanted to come in right away without delay and to sensitize the public to what urban renewal is all about and any way that we can help. We're here. We want to be that bridge that connects communities together, one block, one street, one neighborhood at a time. And we must find recreational, clean, green space to ensure that our children can play in a sanitary environment where they are not run over by crime and pulled into criminal activities by local residents in this constituency. We know who the criminals are. So it is our duty, it is our responsibility to our nation and to this country and to ourselves that we turn the criminals over to the police and the proper authorities where they can get the help and we can get the justice that we seek and we deserve. Not only do we preach the gospel, but we've given out over 50 food baskets, groceries, clothing, and this is done consistently, okay? Um, to deal with the problem in this area, you have to go to the root. And this is what the Ministry of Mount Pleasant Community Baptist Church will be taking on in the very near future. And I hope to, to partner with the Urban Renewal Program in doing it. Since the Urban Renewal Program was reintroduced, McKenzie says it has been well received by area residents. Those residents we spoke to agree that they feel a little safer now that they see more police often patrolling their neighborhoods and listening to their concerns. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil.